Hi, I'm Ken Rosenthal, park naturalist with Gulf Branch Nature Center. It's a gorgeous fall day here in Virginia, and I'm out in the woods looking at one of my favorite plants. It's a small tree that grows here in the woods, and it is in bloom right now, which is not typical for most of our plants. Most of our plants at this time of year have already went through the blooming and pollination, and they are on to uh, seed production. They're producing seeds in pods or maybe in fruits or um, other structures, uh, and they're releasing their seeds. But this plant is actually blooming right now through probably December, and it's called the witch hazel, and that's who we're gonna meet. This is a small witch hazel tree. As you can see, it's an understory species. They don't get very big, so they are shade tolerant, and they like to live in mesic to dry soils. Um, we have quite a few of them here in the park at Gulf Ranch, and I'm gonna get a little closer so I can show you some of the uh, identifying characteristics on the leaves. So here's a witch hazel leaf. You'll notice the base of the leaf on each side of the petiole is uneven, and they have this wavy or scallop shape to their margin or edge of the leaf. And so that can make these really easy to identify. And these are the flowers of the witch hazel. They're a very distinctive look to them. And again, they bloom between September and December. So they're also in bloom at a very different time of year than most other flowers. You can find two types of galls that are fairly common on witch hazel, and both are produced by aphids. This is the spiny witch hazel bud gall aphid, which makes this spiny structure on buds on the witch hazel. The other type of gall that is fairly common that you can notice on witch hazel is the witch hazel leaf gall or cone gall aphid, also produced by an aphid. It's important to note that both of these aphids will also spend part of their life cycle on white birch. These cone gall aphids are often described, these structures are often described as witches' hats, and it's a really easy way to remember them for identification. As they look like little witches' hats, there's another one over here on top of the leaves of the witch hand. I think it's also interesting to note that this particular witch hazel tree that I'm showing you now, you can see the flowers and the leaves, is also hosting, not willingly necessarily, if you'll see these tiny tendrils moving down the branches here uh, and you're clinging to it, and you can see a couple of structures here, which is most definitely not uh, a witch hazel, next to the witch hazel flower. These are um, a type of aerial potato. There is this plant growing up the witch hazel currently. There's a lot of great tradition and folklore surrounding the witch hazel tree, and one of them even includes its name. Uh, as a young naturalist, I remember learning that it was either because it bloomed during the month of October, or perhaps it had something to do with those cone-shaped hats, which are often referred to as witch hats, or perhaps it was how often it was used as traditional medicine, and that that's where it got the name witch hazel. What's interesting to me is, a book I was reading this week to look up some more information of the witch hazel. They talked about how the word witch, W-I-T-C-H, is a corruption of the Anglo-Saxon word witch, W-Y-C-H, which means bending. And the witch hazel was originally called the witch, W-Y-C-H, elm, because its leaves resemble an elm, and it was bendy. Uh, and that changed to witch hazel, was still with W-Y-C-H, and then witch hazel, W-I-T-C-H, with little or nothing to do with any kind of spooky history or traditional lore uh, involved in that name change. So it's a very interesting uh, tree with a lot of neat history behind it. I highly recommend looking up more and you're free to message us on Facebook or send an email to the Nature Center, gulfbranch at arlingtonva.us. If you have more questions or would you like to know more about the witch hazel or um, get a head start on some books that you could look in to find more information about them. Again, it's a really neat tree and I'm so glad you joined me this week for the five minute find. I'm glad only one of us had to get wet and hopefully we'll see you for many more five minute finds and even around the nature center grounds. Thanks and have a great day.